Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Stars Like Us. I am here today with Chanae. Oh my God, wow, look at that rhyme. Chanae is a Virgo sun, a Capricorn moon, a Sagittarius rising, former Texan turned New Yorker. Chanae Alexander is an entrepreneur, lifestyle personality, writer, speaker, and wellness seeker based in Brooklyn, New York. Her message is to empower people to be better through positive thinking, active change, and self-love with a lot of laughing and sarcasm along the way. Chanae spent eight years in the world of marketing PR in the luxury home sector as a director, launched and owned a successful event planning company, very Virgo, and now has made the transition to a full-time social entrepreneur, very Capricorn Moon. She is in the beginning stages of her first book and is the host of Press, Sec Press Send podcast. We did it all the way up until the end where you it did it. up. <laughs> you did it. I'm so proud of you. I would not have been able to get through that myself. It's so lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. And can I say, uh, to start out, I know almost nothing about my signs. Perfect. I know nothing. I mean, Perfect. I know a little bits, but I'm, not, I'm so bad at it. Okay. Let me give you, so here's the rundown. You're a give sad rising. You like adventure. You mm -hmm. are very interested in storytelling. You aren't afraid to embarrass yourself and put yourself out there. Love to see true, it. True, You're a true. Virgo son. You're really fucking hard on yourself. You are super, super, um, I mean, you really want to help people. And sometimes the person you need to help the most is the one on the inside but you're thinking about everyone else over yourself. So that's the reconciliation. You're a Capricorn moon. Fundamentally, you have are on this, this planet Earth to figure out how to be the best caretaker to yourself that you could possibly be. And that also looks like being your own boss and considering and being really sensitive to what does it mean to be a compassionate boss to myself is also one of your life missions. So that's your birth chart in a nutshell. There we go. There we yeah. go. I figured it all out. You figured it all out for me. Done. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. <laughs> and we're going no, just kidding. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for being on this podcast. It's exciting <laughs> to connect with you. I'm a huge fan of your work. I think you are so funny. I think you are so affirming. I, I really love everything that you're doing and I would love for our listeners to get to know you. So yeah, if you wouldn't that. mind sort of animating that bio for us, or you could also just say, fuck the bio. Let me tell you about what's going on in my life right now. Whatever you feel inspired by, we'd love to get to know you. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, so much, so much and so little is going on. I feel like well, I've been in New York for probably, I think I'm on year 13 or 14 now. Oh, so shit. yeah. So like, I think I'm an official New Yorker now and I'm feeling this pull to maybe like leave New York in the next few years, but I'm not sure. You're fine. Um, I'm, I'm feeling this potential pull to like leave New York, but I'm not sure that I want to leave New York anytime, you know, I would probably will stay for the next couple of years, but I'm pull, I'm feeling this pull to do something new, which is really fun, but it's a very, it's a very interesting time to want to do something new, you know, because I think the world is so everything fills up in the air. And so I feel like with my personality, I want to stay as stable as possible, but, and I love my job and I love the people in my life, but I I'm ready for some change. And so I'm trying to like, kind of like map out what that looks like. Being an influencer is a really interesting job, obviously, uh, talking to people for a living on an Instagram story is fucking crazy and weird. And like, I mean, truly sort of like end of days. -ish. I don't know. I don't know if it's end of days is just being like <laughs> for the, for the last like few years, like not talking to many people besides like my camera phone, you know, I don't know if that's like uh, good or bad. Um, I have a little puppy here in Brooklyn and, um, he has been my constant companion other than my partner 
trying to figure out obviously, um, where life goes from here is an interesting thing being a 36 year old now and trying to figure out what the next stages of my life are. Like, do we get married? Do we have kids? What do we do next? It's kind of like, I think everyone's feeling this, like what's next in their life, just at whatever age you are. Um, and so, yeah, I'm trying to figure all of that out. I think I feel like very creatively stumped. I think a lot of us feel very creatively stumped right now. Um, I wanted to write a book this year or last year and the year before that, but it's hard to write when you feel kind of like the world's crashing down around you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm more focused right now on making things for people online and connecting with my community and figuring out what the fuck is going on in the world because I don't think any of us have a goddamn clue about what's happening or what is going to happen. Um, and I'm just trying to kind of like take it day by day and give myself a break for kind of like not knowing what's next. And, you know, speaking of like Virgo energy, the feeling of not knowing what's coming next is like extremely jarring for me, but trying to like feel comfortable in that and trying to like get used to it a little bit. It's taken me two years to get used to it by the way, but I'm getting there. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. I appreciate the full spectrum of everything because I recently have been on this very, you know, I love telling stories. My whole book, This Is Your Destiny, is a collection of stories, my story, my client stories. Um, and one of the biggest challenges is telling full stories, uh, telling complete stories. And that was something that I sort of weaved in and out of the book um, and sort of explained how even in my work one-on-one -on -one with clients, like some clients I'll work with for many years and I'll have like these full 360 understandings of their stories. And then others I will have just worked with for one hour. And that's the right. last time I ever hear from them. So I have no idea if they healed, if they applied any of the things that I said, if they continued the fucked up cycle, if they changed something, I don't know. But the reason I really like being able to tell as full stories as possible is because I think that what's happening on social media with the storytelling through that is that we're getting just, I, I, I mean, slivers of right. reality, slivers of truth of what's going on in somebody's life. And somebody who's just scrolling is going to think, oh my God, like this person has their shit together. This person knows exactly like, you know, this person just has their whole life. So organized and right. well managed and here I am on the other side of the screen and like there's literally like a dumpster fire behind me and it's mm -hmm. like horrific but the truth is is that even when you know you have a great social media following a great platform a great voice you know all of the things that you're doing there's still a lot of unknowns and it's not fully resolved and that's really uncomfortable I think it's really important as a creator online, that's your responsibility too, is to be sharing a spectrum of your story and it's impossible to share everything. And it's, it's also unhealthy to share everything. Yeah. Like it's actually unhealthy. Whenever I see people like sharing literally every second of their day, every, every ounce of their experience, I'm like, that actually is not, that's not good for your soul. That's not good for your personhood, like to be, to be sharing that, like if you're broadcasting your life like that. But I do think what we can do as creators is tell a more mixed experience of our lives. And that's really what I'm trying to do is kind of like, not just show the parts that are glamorous or fun or lighthearted or fully like, you know, fully made up fully, you know, like I really want to show like a little bit more of reality of the mundane of the boring of the, yeah, sure. Some of the fun, but it's not all like parties and vacations and glam and all of that. A lot of it is time at home, time, times that are hard times with a therapist times that are, you know, anxiety riddling, you know, like it, it's, it's, it has to be a little bit more of the other pieces of life, because I think that makes social media feel more grounding and makes social media feel more relatable and real. And also doesn't make it feel so isolating because I think the problem is, is that people love to watch people that feel aspirational, but they hate how it makes them feel. It's kind of like junk food. 
you love to eat it in the moment, but it makes you feel sick afterwards. It's like, it's addictive because it makes you feel bad, you know, and it reinforces the negative things that you think about yourself. You know, it's like, oh, that her life, like the way she looks, the way her skin looks, the, her hot, like boyfriend, her perfect relationship, her perfect body, her beautiful home, her endless money, her Gucci bags, her, you know, vacations. I don't have that because I don't look like that. I don't have that kind of money. I don't, I didn't come from the right place. I don't, you know, if I was only skinnier, if I was only, you know, like if I only met the right person, if I wasn't alone, I would have a happier life. And it reinforces these lies that we hold against ourselves. It, it, it tells us that we're right. And I think that's what we want. We want someone to tell us that we're right. And what, what's the real truth is that that's a filter. They're on the, like, they potentially are on the brink of a divorce that bag's rented. Like you, these are all like made up scenarios and maybe some people are happy and some people are fine, but, but they also go through other shit. Like nothing is perfect. And I think the thing is, is like when we tell better stories in our lives, it's just like when you, even if you're not talking about just influencers or content creators, even if you're talking to your friends, we should be telling better stories to our friends. Like when you meet up with friends, don't just tell them the good things that are going on in your life. Don't just tell them like the highlight reel of what's going on. Tell them the real shit that's going on in your life. You know, tell them like a varied experience, tell them the full picture, because what it does is it allows them to tell you the full picture of what's going on in their life. And I think that's, what's really important because when we share with each other, the full picture, it allows other people to have more perspective on their own experience. And that is actually the, the, the thing that's most helpful for us all is to just have perspective for ourselves. I, I love everything that you said. And everything that you said is actually the reason that I continue to practice astrology is because it is such a language that allows for comprehensive storytelling and for multiple truths to exist simultaneously and for us to be contradictory and for us to be hypocritical and for us to have everything figured out and also be falling apart or for everything to be falling apart and be really happy, you know? And right. in a society that we live in, that everything is through the lens of how can you buy this product? How can we sell this to you? Of course, there's gonna be everything wrong because you wouldn't be buying things all the time if there wasn't something that you had to either have something better, have something new, have something fixed, you know, do something differently. That is just the, that's the nature of the beast. That is, that is what late stage capitalism in America looks like. And our phones are just billboards. They're just marketing tools. So I think that it's also really important for people to know that like, that, you know, there's always going to be something to improve. There's always going to be some issue that needs to be fixed. There would not be all of these businesses trying to, you know, tap influencers for uh, brand deals and to, you know, have advertising linked to your fucking Apple watch and tracking every move. Otherwise, it doesn't necessarily mean that some that you're doing life wrong. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, this is how marketing works. And of course, you know, this because you were in right. marketing. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I, I think like nothing, like, I think assigning positive or negative to things is just like, it's kind of worthless at this point. Like, I mean, yeah, like to me, it is, we are, we are constantly going to feel needs for things and like wants and desires our whole life. It's what we have. Like, it's, it's just like, it's what we are as people right at this point, but it is about not having those desires become like the bedrock of our self-worth. It's like, you can want a bag. There's nothing wrong with wanting a bag to me. It's does that bag 
symbolize your self-worth in a room. Like if, if you showed up with a bag from a thrift store, would you feel like you didn't belong? You know, like it's, it's about what those things symbolize in your life. You know, to me, it's like, I don't like doing what I do. It, it, you know, I go back and forth. It's like, it's like if at the end of the day, if you're in marketing or, and and that's what I do now, you know, if you're in marketing and your sales, but you're also in content creation and caring about people's spirits and caring about people's souls. And at the end of the day, like you do care for people, but you also do have, make a living in selling people things like there is a line in which you are like, how can I do both? And can I do both? And there's a lot of decision-making that has to go in of like, okay, how can I care about people and protect people and limit how much and what I tell people to consume? And how do I also make this feel like you don't have to consume and you can still be here? You know, it's like, it's like, how do you, how do you make this feel like, how do you make the internet feel like a safe place without consumption, but also understand that it's a business. It's a, it's a, it's a very strange place to be in. And it's also like, just like the struggle of our world right now. It is. Yeah. But I think that that's why it's also important to talk about, you know, yeah, it's important to talk about like the full spectrum of what, you know, of the ethics of the the boundaries that each individual creator has and in recognizing also, you know, to be for us as followers and consumers to understand that nothing is ever free, you know, like, right. Social media is free because your data is getting extracted every single second, you know, and like that is neither good nor bad. It just simply is, you know, like we don't need to define it in binary terms of like heaven and hell. Like it just, that's the way it works. So that's, it's important to know that when using these platforms, because that is built into the experience. It's not just about following things that you like and seeing your friends and sharing your own experience. It's like, if you're doing that, you're working around these systems and that's chill, but like, you got to know what the systems are in order for you to know how totally. you want to participate. So a question for you is how do you find that balance? Like both as a creator, but also as a consumer, you know, like, do you have, do you have time off of your phone? Is that Oh, something- I'm off my phone. Like most of the time. I mean, this job is like people think people think being a creator and influencer is like you post cute pictures on your phone and you're like buy this thing and you're like this is a full fledged like i was a marketing director for like an 8 million dollar a year company and my job now is so much more difficult this job is so much more difficult it is i mean i have a I have like a large team that we work with and we like, you're just doing so much more, but you also have the emotional side of a job. You know, I like, for example, I worked on a brand with a product that I absolutely love. And I only work with things that I like things that I would use things that I do use or things that like, obviously we try things out before we, we recommend them. Like, there are people that will shill for fucking anything. And and this is like, this is, this is the thing. This is the importance of like figuring out who you want to follow. And this is that, that, that choice that you're talking about of like influencing isn't about good, bad. It's about choosing who you choose to trust that they've made the decisions on their end of like, they've already done the siphoning for you on their end. And then you do the siphoning on your end of who you choose to follow. Like, do you trust that they are good inherently as people? Like, do you, do you trust that they are people that want that have your best interest at my, in mind and that they are not primarily there to sell you things? Like, is there, is the selling things a part of the experience or is it the experience? Mm-hmm. And I think there's a big difference. So for example, yesterday I was recommending a product. 
I was paid to do this recommendation, but this is actually something that I used to use before I was paid by them. This is something that I just organically bought. And I had a woman that responded that was like, I'm actually a, like a trauma survivor. And this product actually I bought after you recommended it. And it really helped me work through my trauma in this area and blah, 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 blah. And it really changed my life. And connecting over something like that, over something that you can suggest there, there is this whole layer of emotion to this job. And it's not just about products. It's like, you know, people, people, I get 300 DMs a day that I try to answer every single one, which is impossible, but I try to get to them. You know, it's like talking about everything from thoughts of ending life to going through a divorce, through having their first child, through trying to decide which job they should take to asking which lipstick they should buy. They're standing in a line at Sephora. You know, it's, it's the gamut. It's like with every message I'm answering, I'm going on an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. That doesn't sound sustainable. (laughs) That sounds really intense. I mean, I've been doing it for five years straight without a day break. Shit. You know, I mean, it's a hard job. And then that's not even the business side. That's the, and I'm not crying a small violin. I mean, I'm not playing a small violin for myself. I love my job. I really, truly do. And the people make it worthwhile. Like I love those conversations. I would never give it up. A lot of influencers give up their DMs or don't answer or don't respond to people because it's like they don't care about it or it's not the part of the job that they could care to engage in. They have an assistant answer their DMs or comments or whatever. I don't choose to give up that part of my job because I really like that part of my job. I want to answer my DMs because I want to chat with people. That's the part of my job I like. I don't give a fuck about emails. Like that's the part of the job I hate, you know? But like, then there's just so much more on the business side. That's like how we make our money. It's not sustainable for me to create content for free all the time. You know, at, at the end of the day, like you have to, people can love the, their job, but that doesn't mean that you should do it for free. You know, a doctor could love saving lives and connecting with patients, but that doesn't mean he shouldn't get paid. Teachers the same, you know, they should get paid more. Um, but definitely I think, one of the struggles is the, um, the emotional side of this job and that there is a lot of, um, you're at everyone's expense, like your, your emotions are at everyone's expense and you can't really have, you can have a bad day, but you're having a bad day in front of everyone else. You don't just sit at a desk and like have your bad day alone you have your bad day in front of everyone. And it's right. Especially- and you also don't have to deal with like the disappointed people, um, yeah. mentally unwell people, you know, har- harassing people, cruel people, you know, like triggered people. It's a lot to interface with hundreds of thousands of people. And also like, especially I've noticed in the last two years with everyone going through collective trauma right now, nobody knows where to take it out. Like nobody knows where to expel this energy. And the easiest place to expel it is onto strangers online. And like, everything is offensive to people. Everything, everything. Like- Everyone is so sensitive right now and I understand it. And I have a lot of empathy for it. Like I don't blame people and it's, I don't, I don't have a ton of trolls like on my account. I really don't like, I don't have a lot of mean people, but I have a lot of like really sensitive hearts who like can get very, um, just easily offended about things. And like, I understand it's coming from a place of like, we're all dealing with like a lot of open wounds right now. And like, things are just really tender. Like everything's tender and it's hard to like, just let things roll off your back. Like things that I normally would say that wouldn't, wouldn't affect anyone affect people, you know? And so that's hard. 
you know, and it's hard to like overly explain yourself. And I think for me, I have like, I really care about people. Like I genuinely like want the best for people. And I care a lot about human beings. And so when people feel like I've hurt them or I have hurt them, that really affects me because I'm just like, if you knew how much I thought of you in how I like in like how I present myself. I mean, like we've had a year where I've turned down over a hundred thousand dollars in like money to protect people of like things that I don't think are a good fit for me. Like, I don't think a lot of people would do that, you know, or like, I don't know. It's, it's, it can get really hard when people just like misunderstand your intentions for things. And then like, are just like, you're a bad person. And you're like, oh man, if you, if you only knew how much I cared about you and I don't even know you. Yeah. Right. And you as a collective you. Yeah. But also you as a personal, you, I don't even know you, but I care that you're hurt by something I said, but it's not even like how you're taking it is not how I meant it, but I'm, I'm, I'm upset that you're hurt. And like, I wish you weren't hurt. And I care actually that you're hurt and you're like a one person and people are like, who cares? And I'm like, I care. I care. I care that this person's hurt. Like, and it's, yeah, it's just a stranger and I shouldn't care. Cause it's, it's just like, who cares? But it, it, I, I really do actually care. Yeah. I understand. I mean, I really deeply get it. And I, you know, I, I feel such a responsibility, uh, as an astrologer to want to guide people in safe ways, you know? Yeah. And I know it, obviously the spiritual community has been destroyed on the internet in the past year, you know, QAnon and anti-vax people and conspiracy theories, um, have just run totally rampant in this space. And even astrologers and other spiritual people who are not, you know, totally off the fucking rails are doing a lot of doomsday prediction right now because duh, like you get fucking clicky clickety clicks when you do it. Like I haven't, I haven't really like, I'm very interested in that. I'm, I I haven't really like realized I I haven't. It's frightening. (laughs) It's made the internet a really fucking creepy, creepy place. Um, and you know, a lot of, I, listeners will know this was the 2020 this was the reckoning in 2020 I had to unfollow so many of my colleagues I had to set such harsh boundaries I had to you know I really did not want to name people but I just I had to create you know people who are looking would be able to know who I stopped being able to connect with and who I continued to be able to connect with because it was super it was super aggressive Um, and even now, yeah, there's people, are you continuously shocked by like what people are coming out with the first wave? No, I was not shocked because everyone who was sort of initially like just uh, immediately went into like, Oh, here's silver instead of, you know, like you take silver instead of the vaccine. It was like, that wasn't surprising, but I would say that the 2021 ones, the people who have now clickbaited themselves and as, and I think have kind of like left their ethics at the door um, because talking about end times through astrology is so fucking easy, you know, right? it's much harder to keep people um, centered and keep them feeling comfortable and let, you know, and not encourage them to have spiralic anxiety provoking fear, you know, and that's hard right now because it's a really difficult time. But as I remind people, astrologers are humans who are interpreting things, right? Like it's not, there's, there's not one definitive solution to what's going on. There's lots of different ways to look at it and depend and going back to trust, you need to trust the spiritual people that you follow because they don't have there's not one singular person who has every answer. It's their interpretation of what's going on through the tools that they have. So you have to really, you can't passively use social media, you know, and that's the irony of it is that we do, we zone out and disassociate, but you really have to be diligent 
because people are saying a lot of bullshit. Oh my God. It's also crazy. Like it's, it's very much, it's so much easier to stoke fear in people. Yes. Than it is to talk about solutions or like, or like create calm or to like move forward. And I was actually talking, my family is, um, let's say we have different political views and like views on COVID and vaccines and all these things. But I was talking, I'm like, you really need to be careful when all someone's telling you is all the things you need to be scared of versus telling you about how you can move forward in your life. Like projecting doom on you is a way to keep you low and to keep you controlled. I was like, and them just telling you who to be scared of is like, and like how things are going to end. That's not a great sign. I was like, I was like, that's, they don't know. They don't know. And so it sounds like in the astrology world, that's also happening a little bit. I I I have no idea. I'm not in, I love hearing the astrology tea a little bit. I'm I've, I've, I think I am not in that world. And so I love hearing a little bit of the hot astrology gossip. Yeah. Yeah. This is the hot (laughs) astrology, spiritual community adjacent gossip. Uh, and the, the, the tea, the hottest tea ever is that, uh, it's like a really unsafe space, you know? And I didn't know who fucking knew I started doing this when Obama was president. It was a different landscape. It was a fucking different time. I mean, I really wouldn't, I wouldn't 16. I wouldn't think it would be 20. I wouldn't think it. I I feel like those worlds are very separate. No, they're actually, I mean, it's fringe, right? Right. Fringe. So I think that I saw the QAnon seed planted in the spiritual community really early. Huh? Hmm. Fringe. And I don't see it. I mean, I'm like, I don't know. I'm smart. So like I, am able to sort of be like, okay, this is how I have my spirituality. This is, these are the tools that I have in this area of my life. And then I also go to doctors and then sometimes I go to an acupuncturist and then I go, right. To, it's like, it's an, and I have situation. the therapist. Yeah. And then I've been on anti-anxiety medication. Like all of these exist simultaneously. Right. One doesn't negate the other, you know? Um, But that is, I guess, critical thinking. That's critical existing. That's being aware of being multifaceted and multidimensional. It goes back to telling more complete stories, you know, full circle of like, yeah, if everything is just getting wedged into a corner, you're not going to feel like you have a lot of options. You're not going to feel like you can have, you can coexist, but you can, you can love your job and it could be really draining and depleting. Right. It's okay. Totally. Yeah. So interesting. It's ugh, what a weird, strange time we live in. What a strange time. What an existential conversation. Okay. Perfect segue <laughs> into two questions. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to pair them and you can either take them separately or you can take them as a cocktail together. Great. Um, one is what do you believe in? Question two is how does magic show up in your life? I am going to answer them with the same exact word. So a cocktail, and I like my cocktails, straight bourbon all the way through. So I believe in people and magic shows up through people. Like it, people are my defining, people have been my defining compass through everything I've ever done has been directed by people and like my love of them. And as much as right now they're driving me fucking crazy (laughs) at at the core, I still believe in them. And like, as frustrated as I am with them at certain times, like I still work for them. Like I don't work for myself. I work for them. And like, I see like so much magic in them. Like like I have dedicated my life to this, like a community and like, (laughs) I'm getting like choked up about it, but like I, that's, 
that's how I like get up every day and do it over and over. That's so beautiful. That's such a beautiful answer. And it's also so complicated because that obviously is really scary. You know, we're talking about lots and lots of people. And I think about people who have large followings and, you know, in this really, really tense environment where people can flip the switch and turn on you, right? Like that's something I think anyone who has a social media based business, including myself, literally is, you know, constantly nervous about, am I going to, are all of these people who I love and I trust going to turn on me at some point? And I think that when you're honest, you know, when you're telling true stories, like what you're doing and what I aspire to do, and I think I do do, um, do do, I, I think that it's less likely because people are not secretly hating you while they're following you and liking your shit. Um, but it's still really scary. Here's the thing. I had a dad that kind of left out of the blue. And so one of my deep, like traumatic fears is like being abandoned by people. But I think over time, if you can, if you can like be left by people and like realize that you can be found by other people and like that it'll be okay. I think that's what gets me through is like, there might be people that leave me and like these people might be, might leave me, but like, you kind of always will be scooped up, Mm. you know, like other, the right other people will scoop you up and it might not be these people on the internet. It might be another group of people. And, And I always have people, I have people in my life and I'm sure you do too, that I know that I have these other folks and friends and family that scoop me up when people on the internet don't. And so it's like, you know, the trust of letting go of that trauma of like, I might be left, but I will never be left fully. I will never be left alone. Like that's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It also really makes a lot of sense for your Capricorn moon. There it is. Astrology full circle. There we go. Okay. I would love to give you a tarot poll, Um, but the way that my deck works best is with a question. Okay. Um, If we do a general, it gets a little messy. So what is a specific question for this, this very vocal deck? Okay. What do you, what's like coming, what, what should my next season be represented by? Mm, I love that. Great. And by season, do you have a season in mind that you're thinking? Um, Like, are we thinking quarter four or are we thinking just like the next, the next few months, like the, like, or this next season of my life? Well, I want to define season so I can give you a, so we can respond to this with like a so this container is defined. You know what I okay, mean? Okay. So let's say between now and spring. Ooh. Okay. See, I wouldn't yeah. have thought that season. See, I, I would say like from, cause like fall and winter are like the dead months, but like, I love fall and winter. I mean, I don't love winter, but I like fall and Christmas, but then like, but then spring is like spring, summer. Okay, cool. So from now through hibernation period yes. into spring yes beginning of new zodiac cycle so what's the central energy for you to be focusing on yes love it um okay would you like me to work with pile one pile two or pile three three excellent choice okay what is the energy from now through uh the end of the zodiac cycle which ends at pisces season begins at aries season march 20th Oh, it's my favorite card. It's the strength card. I have a tattoo of this one. So Mm. this is associated with Leo, um, which is why this bitch loves it. But it's also (laughs) just an incredible card for, you know, the, the tattoo that I have. And the reason that the symbolism is so monumental to me is that here is this beautiful lion tamer using both physical and emotional strength to make this a very, very happy lion, right? Like this Mm. is a lion that is tail between its legs, like just 
butt up, like literally so happy, so comfortable, so protected. The infinity also shows us that there's like a lot of divine knowing that's coming through. So my interpretation of this and how I would share it with you is that this is really an opportunity to think, okay, well, what are, what is strength look like when bifurcated, you know, and it doesn't need to be emotional and physical strength. It could be emotional and spiritual strength. It could be emotional and mental strength. It could be, you know, it's, but it's approaching it from both sides so that you feel like you have, um, you, that you have a grasp on your situation and that you are ultimately the one who's calling the shots. You have control, you have tenacity, you are brave, you are courageous, but you have it set up in such a way where you can apply both force and you can sort of pick and choose which one you want to apply as you go. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah. I love becoming that a lion tamer basically. Yes. But in the most humane way possible, you know, yeah. nothing like gentle with gentle, gentle with the best interest in your heart. I mean, it also shows like such a pure heart. So it's, so then, you know, I would say in even more tangible terms, um, this could be a really good way for you to think about like, okay, if I have this company, right. If I have this enterprise that I'm running, how can I continue to make this sustainable for me? What other resources do I need to make sure that this is the right pressure is coming in at the right times? And when do I know where I need, like this lion is like cranky and bitchy today. Like this is not a good time for me to be applying pressure. You know, right. that's also using the divine wisdom. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. I love that. So where can our listeners find you and connect with you? Yeah. Um, you can find me, um, if you want to listen to the podcast, come on and listen to press send podcast. I give advice. We usually sit down with listeners. So they come on the podcast and we actually zoom because we live in a different world. I zoom with listeners and we chat about their problems and it's great. Um, so I mean, it's definitely like very kind of dystopian to like talk through zoom <laughs> to people like we're talking right now. I mean, feels very strange, but follow me there. And then well, you can, that, uh, it's strange when you're in your thirties and you know, a time before. right. And you're like, Oh, we we're used to sitting in person and it would be so nice. Um, and you can also follow me at Shanae Alexander on Instagram. That's C H I N A E Alexander. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you for, for the time here. Yes. My pleasure.